friends, it's Josie. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to do a little series on different breads that I'm going to be showing you how to make um, and it be made easier in the bread machine. Um, I've been wanting to do this for a little bit now and then somebody in the comments had said something about it as well. So I thought that I would go ahead and do it in here. Um, some of these are new recipes. Some of them I've already done before. Um, but the bagel one is what we're going to start with today and I have not done that one. Um, but I do have a recipe for that so we're going to try it together and just see how that goes. Hopefully it goes well. Um, so I just have a basic um, bread machine that I got. and. Um, my bread machine says to add in wet ingredients, then dry ingredients, and the yeast on top. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so you need one cup of warm water. So I'm going to add that in first. And then what you need is one and a half teaspoons of salt. And this is a fourth measuring cup, so that's why I use so many. And then we want two tablespoons of sugar. And if you were wondering, Three teaspoons equals a tablespoon. Okay, and then after that, we need three cups of bread flour, but I only have all purpose, so that's what I'm going to use. So let me get my measuring cup and then I'll be right back. So I have my big bucket of flour and we just need three cups of flour. That's one, whoops. Two. And three. I'm really excited because this, if this works, then I will be making these a lot more. Just because we eat a lot of um, bagels and we have eat them with like cream cheese and things like that so it'd be really nice if it all works out um, and does good because this is seems like a pretty simple recipe so next thing we need is two no yeah two and one fourth teaspoons of active dry yeast just like that And then all you do is shut it and I believe you hit it to the dough setting. Let me look to make sure. Yep, the dough setting, which on mine it's uh, number seven. And then we want to start it and we're just going to let this go until it gets done. It's about take about an hour and a half and then I'll bring you back for the next step. So my bagel dough is ready for me to work with that. So before I get started with that, I already have a baking sheet with parchment paper on it set to the side. And now I have my water that I'm going to be bringing up to a boil. And I'm adding in three tablespoons of sugar into that water. And then we will wait for this to boil. And while we wait, we're gonna move over here to the dough and start getting that rolled out so at first what you want to do is punch it down and then we are going to take it out Okay, 
And then what you want to do is put, bring it into six to um, eight um, individual pieces. So let me get my cutter. Okay, so I have my cutter and now we're just going to try to cut it as evenly as possible into six pieces. And if you wanted to use a scale to make sure you got them um, exactly the same size, then you can do that. However, I'm not that worried about it. So we're just going to do it just like this. So what you want to do is, what I like to do is when I make baby goals, because I have made them one other time, is I like to roll them out like this, like a snake, I'd say. And then bring the ends together like that. And then roll that part so that they can get incorporate together and then you have that for your bagel and then we're just going to set that aside another thing that you can do is roll it and try to flatten it out and poke your finger through like this and then just work it around and we will just continue to do this with all of them <coughs> And you want to try to make your hole bigger than what you might think you need it, just because um, it will shrink up quite a bit. Like you'll be surprised about how much it will shrink up. And ask me how I know, because I've had a lot of them close. And this is probably still not enough for it either. Okay, now our last one. Okay, now let's go see if our water is boiling. So it's not yet boiling, so I'm just going to let these sit here just for a little bit until that starts boiling. And then when it does, I will bring you back with me. Um, and until then, I will go ahead and start cleaning up my mess. Okay, as you can see, our water is boiling. So I'm going ahead and get my bagels in here, like two at a time. And we're going to cook it on one side for about a minute. Once that minute is up, then you want to flip it over and cook it again for about 30 seconds. Okay, so now we're going to flip these. And wait about 30 seconds or so. These are really simple, you guys, and as long as they taste good, I will most definitely be making these again. So it's been 30 seconds, so now we're going to put them on our parchment paper, paper that I have right here. And we're going to just continue this step and then um, come back once I get done with all of them. Okay, friends, these are the bagels. They look so yummy and smell really, really good. I went ahead and took them out because they were starting to look that brown on the bottom, so I didn't want them to burn or anything like that. So I'm going to give these a try in the morning, and then I will let you know how that went. Okay, so now we are going to try a new um, cornbread recipe. I haven't made this. I normally just use a Jiffy Con, but we're gonna try this today. So you want one stick of melted butter, and you're gonna add that into your medium-sized bowl. 
By the way, this is the kind of recipe this is. It's a honey butter cornbread. It looks really good, so I hope it is. Um, so we want to get an eight by eight um, baking dish, and you want to spray that with non-stick spray. Preheat your oven to 350, and then you start. So we have one cup, one half cup of melted um, butter. Now we're going to add two third cups of sugar. And then we need to add in two tablespoons of honey. This is some honey that we got locally um, from a place down the street. Which I need to get some more from. If I take this lid off, if it'll help it. I think so. Okay. So there's one. clean that out in a second. So here is two tablespoons. Okay, so with this you want to stir it up until it is well combined. This is gonna go really well at dinner, so for tonight we're having beef stew. So it's gonna be really yummy. Okay, so next what we need to do Okay, so next what we're going to do is add whiskey and the eggs one at a time. And I did have to get store bought eggs. We've been having to get store bought eggs because our chickens are not laying hardly anything anymore. Next, we need to add in one and a fourth cups of um, buttermilk, but I don't. But what you can do for buttermilk, um, to make your own is you add a tablespoon for each cup of milk. So I'm gonna add like one and one fourth, somewhere around there. And we're just going to mix that up just a tad. And just let it sit just for a bit so it can do its thing. Um, and then we'll just wait to add that to this. But I hope this is really good. Um, the recipe looks really good, and there are some good reviews for this one. So I normally just make the Jiffy cornbread just because it's easier. But like I've stated in different videos that I want to try to make my own stuff, um, especially since usually I always have all the ingredients for the most part. Um, and I just need to do it. And it's also healthier for us because it's, like we know what's in our food when we make it ourselves, whereas if we are buying it pre-packaged, we don't really know what's in it. Kind of like um, our clothes. I really wish I could make my own clothes, but I don't have enough time for that, honestly, because I got some stuff from Sheen, 
and I don't know if y'all know or not, but there was this thing going around online, I guess, that my brother-in-law seen, and it was saying that sheen clothes were breaking people out real bad. Well, I had recently got some stuff from Sheen, and I started breaking out really bad. Didn't know what it was about or anything. Just bad. Like, it was all on my side, all on my arms, my legs. I was almost covered in it. And I couldn't, nobody knew what it was. The doctor didn't know what it was. I went to the hospital. They didn't know what it was. They couldn't give me nothing to relieve it besides just some cream to relieve the itch and then some cream to relieve, I mean, some pills to relieve the um, itch. And none of it really worked. And it was terrible, you guys. So terrible. And it was there for like a week, I want to say, um, because they are putting something in their clothes and it can break out your skin and of course if something's gonna happen it's gonna happen to me um, so um, with that said I think it was it's good just to be able to try to make your own stuff if you can and things like that so you can avoid certain issues so now we're gonna add in our milk so this is one and one fourth cups of um, milk. We're going to whisk that together. Now we're going to add in our cornmeal. So we need one cup of cornmeal. You need yellow cornmeal for this recipe. And then you need one cup of flour. And then we're going to go ahead and add in the salt and baking soda. So for the salt, we need one fourth teaspoon of that. So that's one fourth. And then we need a half teaspoon of baking soda. mix this together and you do not want to over mix this the recipe no, uh, says you just want to mix it up until you cannot see the flour anymore So now we're going to pour this into our dish that we have right here. And then we're going to put this in the oven for between 40 and 50 minutes and then we will take it out and you know it's done once you put a toothpick in it and it comes out clean. <laughs> okay, so for our next bread recipe, what we're going to do is just a regular old sandwich bread. So you want one cup of warm water, 
into a small bow. And then we are going to add in sugar and yeast. So we need one third cups of sugar. And then one packet or two and one fourth teaspoons of instant yeast. And then we just mix this up a little bit and then let it sit for about 10 minutes until it's bubbling. While we're waiting on that yeast mixture to bubble up, we're going to go ahead and add in our ingredients to our stand mixer. So you want to add in three cups of flour. And then we're going to add in 3 fourths teaspoon of salt. And then 2 tablespoons of vegetable or canola oil, but I have avocado, so we're going to do that. And we need 2 tablespoons of that. So now we're just going to wait for our yeast and then we will begin the mixing. So to our mixer, we're going to add in our yeast that is done bubbling. And we're going to mix this until it comes up off the sides for probably about 10 minutes. What I like to do with my mixture is do it low for a little bit until the flour gets mixed well and then I will go up a speed. Okay, so it is done and it's pulled away from the side. So we're just gonna flour our counter. And then what you want to do is roll this into a tight dough ball. And then we're going to place this into a greased bowl um, for an hour, hour and a half um, until it doubles in size. And then we're going to wrap it with plastic wrap and put it in a um, somewhere in your um, kitchen that doesn't get like a draft or anything like that. Um, and once it doubles in size, then we will come back to that. Okay, so now we have a fourth cup of melted butter and two tablespoons of honey. And we're going to drizzle this over the cornbread that we just took out. And with the cornbread, you want to poke it with a fork, with your fork, so that you can, it can get down into the cornbread. So the bread is almost ready for us to go ahead and finish. So we are just 
We got a nine by um, five loaf pan that we're greasing so that we can put it in here. Just going to deflate it and put it onto our, and then we're just going to make it long like this. And then we're just going to roll it up nice and tight. And then we're just going to place it in our loaf pan, seam side down, and we're going to let this chill here for about an hour. Okay, friends, so it's almost time for me to go to bed. It's the end of the day, but I wanted to show you how the bread looks. So we already cut into it, but this is how it looks, and it is so yummy. Let me just show you. But it's really, really good. We'll see how it holds up over the night um, because some breads can tend to get too hard um, overnight and stuff like that. So we're gonna leave it here and see how it does and go from there. Um, the bagels did end up getting hard um, after the first night. Um, and so we're gonna try a new recipe for that. Um, but it's all just trial and, trial and error. So whenever you're trying to start up a way to be able to make your own things, then it's trial and error and you just have to find that recipe for you and what you are wanting it for. Um, if I wanted to, I could use it for something else, I'm sure. And after I he heat it up, it gets better. However, you know, it's just too hard to even cut to be able to put it in my toaster. Um, and that's how we normally do our bagels. So that's probably going to cross out that recipe. But it's really, really good if you eat them fresh. Like, they're so good. I stored them in a bread bag and everything, but it still just didn't do too well. So we're going to go back to the drawing board on the bagels. But the bread was really good and um, stuff like that. So I think we're good on that. Um... And then, what else? Okay, you guys. But that is it for this video. I hope you like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.